So uh, I know that you've sort of become known in the functional medicine community talking about methylation specifically. Mm -hmm. Why is methylation and epigenetics and this conversation about brain health so important? You know, I wanted to really blow the conversation up. I mean, as you know, James, we sort of a lot of us in functional medicine got very interested in um, giving a lot of supplements around moving methylation. We were, you know, really sort of myopically focused on single nucleotide polymorphisms. All of us have plenty of them. All of us have methylation single nucleotide polymorphisms. And we, you know, moved towards this idea that we must supplement aggressively. Um, and, you know, just growing up in the lab and looking at a lot of biomarkers, organic acids, looking at amino acids, et cetera, and then, you know, layering the SNPs on, you know, it seemed like that was a, that was a fair direction. I wasn't seeing the turnaround perhaps that I expected. So that was one piece that shifted me. And then the second piece that shifted me was the fact that epigenetic data is booming. I mean, there is so much research coming down the pike daily there are new studies released and what we're seeing now is that um, we're not we don't want to just push methylation forward we don't want to turn the volume up with all of these methyl donors at aggressive doses for very long term um, in all of our patients we need to back up and think about it hypermethylation of the epigenome is associated with every disease most of the data are on cancer but really you can look at any complex chronic disease including neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental conditions and you'll see hypermethylation but you will also even you know in the same individual see yeah. regions of hypomethylation so there's this there's this true imbalance happening in epigenetic expression that alters you know genetic expression profoundly so do we just you know go towards pushing methylation aggressively forward with supplements or do we start backing up and saying hey how do i rethink this so i'm doing right by my patient so i'm being you know as healthy and careful as preventative as proactive as possible Beautiful. and that was my story i mean that was was just my read on the literature and it, it profoundly influenced me in the course of my practice. Absolutely. So now you've had a, a history now of, of seeing all these different types of patients, all these issues, and you've, you've done different types of strategies. You know, as we start to, as sort of like the concepts kind of mature, yeah. what do you think is like a responsible way for practitioners at home yeah. to understand methylation and, and to support the patient's methylation in a way that's sustainable? Absolutely. That's a great question. So. You know, there's a reason why Bredesen has chosen the Institute for Functional Medicine to really start to unfold this incredible work that he's doing. Yeah. You know, he, it's, it's us he wants to teach his model to. And um, in my read and in my research, what he's doing, this, this holistic functional approach where we're looking at the whole being, the being in their environment, where we're leaning on the matrix, we're using all of these re really important, you know, casting a wide net, using all of these tools, that has the best chance for uh, supporting healthy methylation expression. So beyond just single nucleotide polymorphisms, beyond the supplements, not that those things are bad and need to be completely eliminated from our thinking as clinicians, we just need to back up. You want me to talk about a couple of them? Because yeah, we're sure. talking about all, all right, these big it. pictures. Yeah. So it's functional medicine, it's systems medicine, um, gut health. You know, our healthy gut microbiome impacts methylation as much as anything else. Exercise. Everybody today mentioned exercise. Actually, Perlmutter talked about it quite a bit. That is uh, clearly demonstrative to modulate favorably epigenetic expression. Sufficient sleep, mitochondrial health. All these mitochondrial intermediates absolutely regulate methylation, epigenetic methylation, and demethylation. You know, we actually clean the methylation marks off of the epigenome sometimes, you know, and just sort of clean the DNA as it were. It's really cool and mitochondria are key in that. Um, you know, good diet, of course, really good diet. We want to be low glycemic. We can think about, you know, intermittent fasting, as you guys have talked about a lot. We can think about generating some ketones. Certainly the Mediterranean diet appears to be really healthy in this arena. Again, doctors today mentioning that. Um, you know, just the, the nine yards. Or we can also think about like stress reduction, um, meditation. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. like, it's like this full functional approach is, you know, not only how we're going to protect against neurodegeneration and treat our patients with um, neuro diseases, but, you know, we're also helping epigenetic, healthy, pristine epigenetic expression. What are some of the tools that you lean on in your practice to be able to understand what's going on at this level for patients? Mm. 
Well, you know, coming from a laboratory background, I do think that there's a place for labs. I do organic acids um, on, a, on a lot of patients. I'd like to investigate the microbiome, so I do stool analysis. Maybe I'll look at, you know, the oral microbiome, um, the genital urinary microbiome, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm looking at amino acids. I do our standard labs. I look for evidence of inflammation, oxidative stress, et cetera. I do use supplements when I see evidence of deficiency. I look for toxins as well. Um, most people have some evidence of certainly metallotoxins. We see mercury pretty commonly, arsenic pretty commonly, yeah. lead, et cetera. Those have to be rectified. Um, making sure their nutrients are balanced, making sure they're detoxing well, all of these things kind of come together yeah. to um, you know, really allow us to support healthy epigenetic expression. And you know, I know part of the naturopathic tradition and the functional medicine tradition is, is the serious intake process. Yeah. Are there things that sure. pop up in an intake that will give you a twinge to say, okay, look, I need to look into it a bit deeper with this patient? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great question. So yes, I, as an ND and as a functional medicine doc, do do a, you know, long, a <laughs> long intake. And my first office visit with patients is two hours. So I'm okay. looking really, really carefully. Um, we can start from the premise that there's probably some methylation imbalance in everybody um, who's coming into my practice with a complex chronic condition. And certainly as we age, uh, that's part of the aging and, and certainly revved up in the um, you know, in an aging process that's not healthy or accelerated. Uh, you know, we can look at history of miscarriage. We can look at, you know, mental health. We can look at um, history or family history of cancers. Um, we can look at evidence of immune dysfunction, so autoimmunity, allergic disease, um, and again, n you know, neuro conditions. Are we seeing any neurodevelopmental stuff, either in the individual in front of me or in their family history? Are we seeing neurodegenerative stuff? Um, cardiovascular disease, I mean, it actually really, you know, the list is, is, is long. Yeah. But certainly, if we're talking about sort of the classically recognized methylation issues, um, you know, when we see miscarriages, history, or difficulty with um, conceiving or fertility, when we see, you know, mental health, um, I, I would say those might be some of the big ones that would flag us. But honestly, you guys, we really we need to be considering it in um, in the gamut in what I've just really outlined. Absolutely. Well, look, I really appreciate you, you coming to share. And uh, for those of you who are watching, you can find out a lot more about uh, Dr. Fitzgerald with her work. Uh, she has a blog and uh, a lot of content coming yep. out all the time. I know the IFM shares a lot of your content out there that you're making. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, find out a lot more about methylation. This is a serious, uh, serious issue. It's affecting a lot of chronic, chronic conditions. It seems like even though there's a neuro neurology conference, you're going, to, uh, you're going to see improvements in all kinds of patients with all kinds of symptoms if you can work out how to regulate this effectively. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And are there foods that are naturally balancing rather mm -hmm. than upregulating and downregulating yes. but yes. moving? What are some of the yes. foods? Well, so first of all, we do want a diet that has a, you know, a healthy complement of methyl donors. We really do. Um, when we look at natural foods, you know, like whole foods, we don't see any, you can eat lots of methyl donors and there isn't uh, any association with um, cancer. Whereas when we look at some of the some some of the folic acid research, some of the fortified uh, grains and so forth, when you look at that over the over the period that we've been um, fortifying stuff, you can see risk for increased cancer and so forth. I mean, I don't want to be alarmist. You know, this, the but trend put down is the small, but cereal. yeah, yeah, move on to whole foods. <laughs> so we do want a rich methyl donor diet, and okay. we can do that through you know liver and our greens, and we can do it through all sorts of seeds. But there's this whole arsenal of what we're calling methylation adaptogens. There's okay. this whole cool body of research that we're excited about, and these are guys that actually have the ability to adaptogenically balance. Um, a major beautiful one, which you use in your practice already, is curcumin. Curcumin okay. is a wonderful methylation adaptogen. It has, it can inhibit hypermethylation. And so some of those genes, those really important genes um, that are shut down, it can liberate expression again. And then in some of the ones that are turned on, it can turn them off. So curcumin is a major one. All, you know, many, many, many of the flavonoids. So sulforaphane, resveratrol, uh, rosmarinic acid, luteolin, quercetin, etc. cetera. Um, EGCG, like we just want rich, robust amounts of these players in our diet. And, and the data around them, the research around them is, is so cool, so interesting. 
that's that's really great and I, I appreciate you sharing that because ultimately you know it can seem like quite an intimidating topic I think and, and but at the end yeah. of the day you know a lot of the recommendations that you're going to be making are probably in line with the kind of things you've been doing anyway yep. Yep. and so that makes it um, yep. you know makes it very attractive well yep. thank you so much for for sharing your wisdom uh, with the community and uh, if you uh, will look forward to catching up with uh, many more of the IFM faculty and IFM community here at the conference. Oh.